Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about the center of our solar system. Because even though the common sense here dictates that the center of our solar system should be in the middle of our own sun, somewhere right here, in reality that's not true. That's not where the center is at all, because of the gravitational pull of other objects. And very recently the scientists studying various pulsars and gravitational waves were able to estimate this particular location to an extremely accurate degree. An accuracy of approximately 100 meters or 300 feet. So let's talk a little bit more about this and how they were able to achieve this and welcome to the math. Now I'm pretty sure back in school the teachers were always telling us that the sun is the center of our solar system, but at the same time they never really specified where exactly that center was. And it does make sense that many people do assume that it's right in the middle of our own sun. I mean, why wouldn't it be, right? The thing is, because there are so many planets in our solar system that exert gravitational pull on the sun, the entire solar system has a kind of a tug of war going on with all of the planets and the star itself pulling on everything at the same time. And because of this, even in this simple simulation in Universe Sandbox, if we were to zoom out just a little bit, you would start seeing that the sun itself is also moving around this imaginary point in the middle, creating a kind of a tiny orbit in its own spot. In other words, the center of the solar system is not inside the sun. It's just outside of it, somewhere right here as a matter of fact, where you see the word Barry Center. That's the word we usually use when defining the centers of various uh, relatively complex gravitational systems. And very recently the scientists were able to estimate this particular location to about 100 meters or 300 feet in accuracy. But we still have so much to go before we can estimate this with even more accuracy. But first of all, let me help you visualize why this Barry Center is even formed. Here, if I were to place the Sun with tiny Jupiter right next to it, the um, actual Barry Center is very very deep inside the Sun, very close to its center. But interestingly, if you were to look at the speed of the Sun right now, at the velocity of the Sun, you would start seeing a graph that kind of looks like this, with the maximum speed right here being about 200 meters per second and the minimum speed being zero. So essentially, because Jupiter is orbiting around the Sun relatively close to it, it starts pulling at it and starts giving it velocity. If however I were to move Jupiter farther away now, it still pulls at the Sun, but the total velocity here decreases to about 70 meters per second, while at the same time the periods here increasing quite dramatically. And essentially here, even though Jupiter has a little bit less of a pull at the Sun, it gets to uh, spend much longer time pulling at it, allowing it to move across much wider area of space. And the farther you move Jupiter, the more it will start affecting the Barry Center, eventually moving it outside of the Sun itself. And so here, as you can see, with Jupiter in its current location, the Barry Center is outside of the Sun, and even though the pull has decreased even more, it now has approximately 11 years to pull at the Sun, making it move in somewhat similar to this motion. But the thing is, because there are also other planets like Saturn, Neptune and Uranus that are also quite influential, and even Earth itself, while at the same time the actual orbits of the planets don't necessarily align at the same time, all of these pulls happen from various directions and at all times. So the Barry Center is extremely difficult to predict and to even calculate. And even though Jupiter provides the highest pull on the Sun, other planets add enough for this Barry Center to move quite unpredictably and thus affecting certain calculations here on Earth. And one of the ways scientists realized that the Barry Center was actually quite important in modern studies is when they were looking at the gravitational waves from various black hole and neutron star collisions, but using pulsars to try to study these gravitational waves and their location. Pulsars or neutron stars that can pulsate and produce very, very specific and very accurate pulsations are very useful for us in different fields. Specifically, nowadays, we think we can actually use them in extremely precise navigation. About two years ago, the NICER telescope that's located on the International Space Station was used for the first time to experimentally prove that we can use pulsars to estimate our location extremely, extremely precisely. By detecting the deviations in individual pulsations of each of the pulsars, we can then estimate where the spacecraft or really anything is located with extreme precision. 
and this precision can be down to only a few meters or a few feet apart. This is something that we are not able to do with anything else. But the thing is, when the scientists were using NICER telescope and also a lot of other telescopes to investigate both pulsar navigation and also detection of various gravitational waves across the universe, they realized that the actual accuracy was being disrupted by something. And it didn't really take them long to figure out that that something was related to the location of the center of the solar system. Because we weren't really sure where the center was and because the calculations demanded it, there were always a lot of discrepancies, which to some extent are visualized right here. And one of the ways they realized it was related to the Berry Center or the center of the solar system is because there were unusual discrepancies in pulsar detections, even though there were no gravitational waves discovered in that particular period of time. In other words, it was very likely related to the gravitational effects from planets um, around us and from the Sun itself. And by collecting enough data from the so-called Nanograph or North American Nanohertz Observatory for Gravitational Waves, they were able to come up with a software that you can actually even download yourself if you'd like to try to use it, although let's just say this is not the easiest software out there. Anyway, if you'd like to take a look, here it is, uh, it's also in the description below. And so they developed this software that allowed them to estimate the center itself with even more precision, which will very likely improve even more as we collect more data from nanograph and from other observations. But the important question here is, will we be able to use this for actual navigation in the future? And for now, the answer is not really because we just don't have enough devices or even techniques to turn pulsars into, I guess, interstellar GPS. However, studies like this and also similar studies that investigate pulsars and connect them to gravitational waves have a potential of creating a very complex system where pulsars do eventually become absolutely necessary for our navigation across the depths of space. Specifically, if one day we decide to investigate other planets and, of course, other stars, and if also one day we decide to become an interstellar species, pulsar navigation will be absolutely crucial for our survival. But even today, pulsar navigation can improve our navigation in the solar system as well. Because even right now, the location of various planets, like for example Uranus that you see right here, Jupiter, Saturn, and Neptune, um, is not really that precise. Even though we sort of know where they're located, the precision of their location is still relatively limited, mostly because of the older techniques we're still using. Such as, for example, the Doppler shift effect that relies on measuring the speed of an object and then trying to see by how much the light from this object changes. It's not a very precise um, measurement technique and it does actually create very, very large uncertainties in trying to estimate where, for example, Uranus is located right now. In other words, pulsar navigation is very likely going to be the future of space exploration. We just have to get a little bit better at it. And studies like this are taking us a little bit closer to being able to do so a lot more efficiently. But because of this study and because of the discoveries in this paper, we're now able to estimate our own location in the solar system and also in the galaxy a little bit better as well. In other words, it allows us to see where we are located in comparison to all of the other planets as well. Once again, this is going to be even more important in the future, especially as we decide to develop various colonies and also various settlements on planets like Mars and possibly even beyond. For now, however, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention in this video. It's definitely a good first step in trying to establish our location with more precision, but we're still not really there yet. The uncertainty and errors here are still relatively large, especially if we decide to leave our solar system at some point. But in the future, with better software and also with better investigations and observations, we'll improve this to the point where we'll know exactly where we are located and also where the center of the solar system is as well. But until then, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention in this video. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe support this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. And alternatively, you can also support this channel by buying the wonderful person t-shirt that you can also find in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.